Kelly. I'm Rich. And we are one of us adventures. This week we are laying our outro floor. Now some band builders have referred to this as toilet flooring, like you get in a school, but we like to think of it as hard wearing. So this week... My dad Dave joins us to lay the floor. We cut it up. Uh, we get it laid. And we start to finesse areas like the stairs. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and to leave us a comment below. Thank you. Enjoy. First thing to point out is we are a little bit out of sequence with our um, the way that the video might present to you today. So you'll see some stuff in the background that actually is going to be in the next video. Reason being is that basically we've realised that we need the floor down before we can carry on with some other bits and bobs. And that's what we're going to do today. The first step of that is basically clearing the bus completely out. So my step one is just to make sure that there's nothing under the floor in this plywood that can protrude through. And that includes dirt, it includes any raised screws and all of that stuff. So remember we'll be putting these in months and months and months ago. I don't think it'll be this long before I be doing the floor, but here we are. Um, now I've decided to fit this myself. Father-in-law Dave, the legend that he is, has come around in a minute. I'm gonna pay someone to do it because I'm actually very nervous about doing this, having never really cut any sort of vinyl before. Um, with, you know, a high degree of accuracy. And I even got a quote to get it done. And actually it was very reasonable. So if this all goes wrong, I've really got myself to blame with it. Hopefully it turns out okay. Now, what we're gonna aim to do today is actually get the main floor laid. So from the front portion here all the way to the back, we'll have it cut around the wheel arches. Dave's here now. Um, this, believe it or not, is not the floor we're using. So there is a flooring company down the road. Every week they throw out li lino and vinyl and carpet. On these massive off cuts. So a few weeks ago I grabbed this and I've just used it to put down on the driveway so we've got a clean place to work. Anybody <laughs> wants this, if anybody wants this, let me know. Um this wasn't quite big enough for our van. Let me know. Southwest based, you're welcome to it. I've been stored upstairs in our spare bedroom and getting it downstairs was simply a case of riding it down. Because it was pretty damn heavy. Stay there, there was two of us. It's heavy. Dave's just removing the panels, so we're taking some of the wall panels away just so we can lay the floor underneath the wall. We can't do it with all of them because there's just too many fixings in them, but for the ones that we can, we're going to. We laid this on a nice warm day, which seems to help with the creases that we were fearing would be in the outro. You can see that they were a little bit of an undulation, but it wasn't too bad. We've just measured it from the front all the way to the back and we're going to cut it to 560 so it hangs out the back for the time being, just gives us a little bit more wiggle room. So we're going to cut it to length first, then we're going to measure the width and cut that long length off too. Mainly so it fits in here better, but also it's so heavy. Um, that'll take a third off of that roll, I think, in weight. This thick old stuff, we've already changed the blade once. Um, we'll just change them again to do down here. We need to take off 12 centimeters to cut it to width, and then we should be able to pop it in the bus and start trimming it up, hopefully. But it's thick, like really thick stuff, thicker than kind of normal lino. So we've got a curved blade in there and normal blade. We can both forget. Where are the old ones out first, Dave? Hmm? Where are the old ones out first? Yeah. Get it in the back of the van was tricky, namely because the heater was in the way and a couple of other bits and bobs, but we did get there in the end. The 
cannot stress this enough, the blades take a battering with this outro because it's so thick. So make sure you've got plenty to start off with and change them frequently is what we found worked best. Dave is really good at this and he's taking little bits off at a time. I mean, I'm gonna leave them to do in this bit actually and we need to cut off a couple of millimeter off of all of these boards. So I'm gonna get on with that whilst we do this and then we'll go on to the finer detail in here later. I think we might need to glue this down before we can do the bracket mounts because as you can see there is a slight wave to it um, but it surprisingly laid a lot flatter than what I thought it would seeing as it's been rolled up in our spare bedroom for the best part of six months. You can see that it's slightly wavy going along so what we're going to do is cut around these rear wheel arches next and we've got quite a healthy margin. What I've decided to do is actually the floor is going to be laid underneath everything. Now, some people have said that's not a good idea because if you need to change it in the future, you know, how are you going to get the floor out? One, I don't envisage that ever being a problem. And two, if I did need to do that, I would just cut around and leave the, you know, leave this underneath whatever's there, the shower tray, whatever. I would just leave it there. But I don't think it will be a problem. One of the main reasons we want to do it this way is um, if we've got it underneath everything, it will look really neat. So we won't have any edges anywhere that we can see um, that aren't straight because it will run underneath the furniture, it'll run under the sofa, the kitchen units, the shower, the wardrobe, the bed. It will look perfect. The second reason is if we add sand, water, pee whatever on the floor it will be sealed basically creating you know a watertight seal and the, another reason is this will actually create another layer of warmth for us um, another layer of insulation so that's why we're putting it all in now here comes david he's going to start with cutting these out and i'm going to go and chop the boards so we can fit them back in the front they're done clamped all the five boards together my goodness, did it make a lot of sawdust. Okay, so Dave's got to this belt up here. I've just trimmed this bit off here. Don't look at it, it's bad. Um, what are you doing next? What's your thinking here? Trim the end off so I haven't got so much weight hanging over. Because we left the excess just in case. Because we had it. And then I've got to pull that out, trim that edge to get it back under. Because there's too much here at the moment. And then that's and then get fit this side in as well. Looking good, it's and looking just good. Trim backwards and forwards. And all around this edge here, we've trimmed it. Well, Dave trimmed around here. This will actually all be underneath cabinets and insulation and all sorts of stuff. But we wanted it all under there for reasons already explained. And we've made a mess of the wall. So <laughs> yeah. that's the learning thing as well. Yeah, it seems to mark, mark white stuff quite easily, but it is just the undercoat. Um, and we'll be careful when we're painting, obviously. Now we're trying to figure out how to glue this down. Bear in mind we've got a heater in the way. So you can't fold it all the way back on itself and at the back we've got it underneath the board so what we might end up with is the main living area glued the bit at the back for the time being loose laid because there's so much stuff going on it anyway so we're going to be using this trim fix adhesive um it's temperature stable up to 120 degrees and basically what you do is you spray it on the two mating surfaces surfaces so the floor and the floor <laughs> and then it will, one will bond to the, the other buy this in bulk you use loads of it the trim fix was sprayed on the floor and on the back of the outro and then we rolled it down slowly a bit at a time i'm just going to pop these panels back in before we cut these out
I'm going to cut these up now. I'm going to use the curved blade. I've done one already. Um, I'm just going to do the other three. So the curved blade seems to be working well here, less friction. I'm literally just nibbling out bits and bobs as we go through um, and then putting these in afterwards. So we've got one, two, three more of these to cut. Time for another blade. Literally down to the last one, but it needs to be changed. It's time to snag. Saturday, so if I get this done today, it'll be in the video that you're watching this second. As right, so we're running it right to the wire this week. The next step for these steps is to cut one, two, three, four um, treads and risers. So I've got a one meter off cut from earlier in the video that I'm going to use to make these up. These um, welds that run down here. Yes, it makes it nice and strong, but it, what it does mean is I haven't got a flat edge to work to. So what I'm actually going to do with the outro on the steps is I'm going to scribe it into the corners and then the side pieces, when I put them on, will sit on top of it. So I've just taped up along one side and I'm going to butt it up against this and use a big washer to, to um, take my scribe. And then I've got some really robust, any sharp scissors they're called, to cut along that line. It will sit much tighter to the corner of there. This is what we want. I cut the treads and the risers out first, and then first of all gluing down the treads. And I've drilled out some holes for some lights at this point too. We've bought this stair nose in to go on. <laughs> It's all a bit out of sync at the moment of how I'm doing this because you kind of have to, you have to do like a couple of jobs in a specific order. So I'm going to cut this to length now for the second step. The reason being, this guy here, I need to unbolt. I've already caught my finger, as you can see. I need to unbolt so I can put the outro on the step. And then I'm going to try and get the stair nose in under it as well but I don't know how that will pan out. But I'm going to cut it to the full width here, about 89.5, just so I'm ready, because I'm going to unbolt this and then it becomes a wibbly wobbly all over the shop, um, as you'll see, and it becomes a little bit unwieldy. So I want everything in a row. So when this is off, I can put the outro on and then put the stair nose in on top of the outro and away we go. Unfortunately, to get this bar out, you have to climb underneath the bus. Just, I'll just put a couple of holes here, not very neat, but I'm hoping I'll be here, here, here. I could have made it easier on myself. Like, well, I don't know if it'll be easier or not, but I could have just cut around this hole. But I'm hoping that eventually, if I can get this in, then this will look neater. Oh. There is actually online around people lining in steps, but it's because- Not even I know what I said there. Basically, what I meant to say was, there aren't many videos online of people linoing steps. This isn't lino, I think. This is the outro stuff and it is slip resistant. I guess normally with a lino, you, you wouldn't, wouldn't put it, it on a step, but this is like, you know, it's got plenty of friction to it.
this next bit on the side i'm going to try and make it so it follows the steps up goes around the front and down that angled part the way i'm doing that is i'm making a template um but i'm using masking tape and what i'm hoping to be able to do is cut this out and then lay it in the bus and trim the top edge off and away you go please ignore the chainsaw i've done a bit of an experiment um so I've done one side in the outro and I've done the other side in the carpet. I think I prefer the carpet for a couple of reasons. One, it softens the look up a bit. Two, I won't have to run sort of silicone around there to give me a nice edge and um, where I will with the other. So I'm going to, for the time being at the least, I think I'm going to put the four-way carpet on this side as well which will blend into the cab um, and I'll keep this piece and if I change my mind I can swap it over later it's not the end of the world I like the look of that better um, I've run out of screws and stuff and time actually for today but one last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to climb under the bus and drill through the four holes that I drilled earlier because I've got some lights to go on the front of the steps so we can see where we're going kind of going in the dark so I'm just going to drill them through pop them up pop that on At this stage, I've still got the top stair nosing to add, a little bit on the side, and a bit on the bottom as well. When the screws arrive, we'll make sure that's done. I'm really pleased with the finish and the look on the floor, and um, we've started on the steps, but it's a lot more work than we thought, so we're going to finish that and hopefully show it to you in our next video. So we hope you have a really good week, guys. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Take care. See you soon. One, two, three. Bye! Bye.